I think that when you talk about density to a lot of people, what they perceive in their mind is is not not always reality. You know, what people sometimes they, they think density and they think overcrowding. And the two are totally separate issues. You can have a, for example, you can have a high density building, but everyone still has a very livable unit, right? As compared to a single family home that holds three families. And that's, that does happen in Oxnard, by the way. You know, I talked to some real estate workers, and they said it happens all the time. So that's the kind of issue that we need to address. A single family, you know, uh, in, 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 a, in a lot may look like, oh, it's low density, that's what you know, is more desirable. But if you have two or three families living there, you know, that, that's, not, that's not good. So. Yeah, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Abel Gagne. I'm Hi, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Tom Garcia with Tomas Cafe. Sitting here with my, both my parents here. Owns a Garcia Mortuary, and I was born and uh, raised here in uh, downtown Oxnard. Been living here uh, a little bit uh, over 37 years, and uh, so basically, what I'd like to say is that uh, one of the films that did really uh, it kind of woke me up and scared me a little bit about how you know the the cartoon about how uh, the city was being just overtaken by the automobile and 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 and, and the city growing to the edges of town and then you have to service those areas and pay money and I and it kind of you know uh, probably scares more the city manager than anybody he has to we all have to pay for everybody to be serviced and uh, and I and I think that's where we've, where we've been headed the last you know 50 years right the city of Oxford has been uh, building large 2,000 tract uh, prop I mean uh, areas and areas and just kept on building out in blocks and I and to me what I was when I was watching that video I was thinking we have to stop that now we have some I've heard of some major projects that are being coming built you know next to the airport big large tracks of, of farmland is being gobbled up uh, just because you know just because we want to build just because we want something new just you know instead of I want to hopefully we take notes and embrace exactly what uh, what they were talking about is locking the city in and building from the within you know downtown first out right you know and and i think we should that was a great uh film that we saw there so hopefully you can learn something from that and uh, come back to downtown i got one last dying comment here then we're going to have a few more films and then we'll come back and speak some more thank you good evening folks my name is pablo ortiz i uh, represent the uh, downtowners as their president and I also, and what can bring that here? What can bring that kind of enthusiasm here is the right planning, taking into consideration demographics. Now, I don't want to be exclusionary, please. That's nope. not my. Nope. That's right. not my situation. Believe me, I I, 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 I market businesses with with the use of demographics correctly, and that's what we have to look at here very carefully. And that well, your point though is back to coordination of the, the, of the events of downtown and coordinating the businesses of downtown, and it, the, and that goes into the coordination of the planning. So coordination, coordination, coordination. That's where we are today. Over the course of the last 15, 20 years that I've been here, yeah. I've seen too many people uh, try to build something here yeah. that doesn't serve the the, the, the demographics, right. and they quickly fail. The only uh, businesses that do uh, survive here are those that serve the demographics here. And so, uh, are we in some kind of denial here of what the city is? Let's get uh, with it and see if we can bring that type of excitement from that uh, demographic here. And it, and, and it will be so exciting here that people will come here to be part of it. Great. Thank you. Yeah, sure. I, I think that... Um, in the in the Fresno film, Stefano said something, and I I'm not going to remember it and say it as eloquently as he did. But but it's it's not just an issue of changing policy; it's an issue of changing how we think about these things. And it's and you're you're absolutely right. It has there has to be a shift in the mindset of the people of Oxnard to say that you are for Oxnard and you are here for Oxnard and you want Oxnard to be a great city and be a great community. And I think that that's where the change will really come in, and I think that that's what, you know, starting off this event with the charrette is, is all about. I just so. want to add what he says, you know, I've been here almost 60 years, and that, and that happens during the Salsa Festival, 
for those of you that have been downtown South Fresno, you're not in a Latino downtown right. violent community. Right. You're in a very vibrant community with everybody of all races, right. having a great time with families and kids and great music. And they come not only from the state of California, they come out of out, out of the out of the state. And that's one of the few times that you get that feeling. And no disrespect, but the, the Salsa Festival is much larger. And it's a whole different feeling. It's more of a tourist attraction. It doesn't have that feeling of the demographics that we're talking about. Okay. All right, another round of films. Here we'll come right back. Thank you. And don't be afraid to speak next time. It's California where the RSVP people don't show up. <laughs> but, it's, but I'll say this too, and I've heard this before uh, last night. You are the right people to be here because you came. You are also the people that go to the planning commission, that go to the city council. You're engaged. You go to the events. You go to your town. You are the right people here. We, it, it, let's, if we can get ourselves together, think of the change that can happen because you are the people that show up and make change. And I really appreciate you all coming last night. And if you didn't come last night, coming tonight. And if you don't come, tomorrow at 1030 at the Pagoda with your umbrella, we're going to have a walking tour. On Monday, at, back at the Social Security office, we are going to have a, a pinup of all of our, our, of our ideas and the things that we're talking about. And we want your feedback to say, yes, this is good. No, this is bad. And then we're going to do it again the next night on Tuesday at City Hall in a more formal session to get your um, uh, elected officials to look and see and think about what we're talking about. And then we'll provide a, a vision plan from this. But we need your input. We need your process. I'd like to wrap up by letting Joel. Hey, he brought this. Oh, you got another question? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Just a comment. Um, you already said the city has no money, and we know that. We also know that we have a large, low-income community. That's a very real reality when you deal with this. When you talk about downtown, there's a lot of businesses that cater. And uh, I too want to thank you for being here tonight. And, and you know, it takes the it takes the roots to grow the trees. And in this room are are those roots. And I just wanted to comment to you because I was in the Central Valley. I've also, uh, I came from Colorado Springs, Colorado before that. So I've seen communities that are like way up there in the livable, uh, beautiful um, environments. Central Valley was tough. Did you see the energy and excitement from, from the mayor of Fresno? And I, I was there, I knew those folks. And there's one thing that you said is it was, wow, we have a lot more things here in Oxnard than they did in the Central Valley. Oh my gosh, that's why I'm here. <laughs> but I will tell you what, if you don't have your hearts and souls into it as a community, it's not going to work. You know, we went through some of the hardest times during that recession, but everybody pulled together. Everybody said we can do better for our community. So that's my challenge to you. We're working on getting our act together as a city, as an organization with the council, but now it's our partnership time. Now it's partnership time. And, um, you know, we can say all we want about what we don't like, but the ideas and minds of all in this room and all of our partnerships are what will make this roll. I can promise you that. And we do have some money, a little bit of seed money, to do some things. So let's get that plan and let's come together with it and then let's start seeing some of that go. So thank you again. I would expect all of you to be here in Gale Force Winds tomorrow yeah. in your raincoats. I'm going to be there, my wife and I. Um, but really uh, embrace this and spread it. You know, this is what I think this city's needed for a long time, for years. I came here because I saw all the beauty of what we have. And this is like, I just feel right on the edge of, here we go, from whatever you felt the past has been, when it hasn't tasted very good, this is what begins that great place. And I too am here because of the unique culture and the unique diversity of this community to celebrate it. So, wow, we're on our way. So with that, good night to all, and uh, we'll see you all in the morning, bright and early. Thank you all for coming out. Um, just want to say that despite the fact that we've done screenings a lot of other places, relatively speaking, we actually haven't done that many, and you guys, by doing this and by having CNU California come, you and your city manager and your elected officials are really doing so much more than most of the other cities in the country. So you guys are on the bleeding edge. And these are, these are difficult challenges that we have ahead. And you know, we, we intentionally paired the film with, with the elderly people, right, followed by the one with the kids walking to school, because this is something that affects 
people from ages zero to 100, and we're at an interesting point in history where there are more generations alive today than there have ever been at once, because people are living longer. And so the challenges we face and that you face are uh, unknown, but great job to all of you for rising to face the challenge and for saying that you want to take this step into the future. And thank you for coming out tonight. Kimberly. We're almost yeah. done. Yes, we're almost done. I forgot to thank the... Um, just quickly, the um, theater operator allowed for us to use this venue uh, uh, for free, so we want to make sure that we give him a very special thanks for that. Thank you. And that's Mr. Dan Bikini, and he's with San Carlos, San Carlos Cinema, so thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Good night. Joel Karahadian, uh, co-founder of the New Urbanism Film Festival, uh, and we are thrilled to bring these films uh, that we've been screening for the last three years at our festival in Los Angeles to the CNU California Charette here in Oxnard. Uh, we started this festival uh, with these sorts of events in mind because we are all about bringing everyday people into the planning process because building our cities is a project for all of society, not just for a selected group of practitioners. Uh, you can find us online, newurbanismfilmfestival.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook and Twitter, at NW Urban Film Fest. Um, I thought that the films were able to do exactly what we had hoped, which is visually show people examples of other places that are dealing with similar situations and how they've approached them technically, emotionally, uh, to make change that fits their their place. And uh, so what I appreciated was the dialogue that we had at the half break, at the mid break, and then afterwards where uh, the conversation turned from what's wrong, what can't be done, to these are the possibilities we have. These are the great things we have that we can build upon and think of possibilities for the future rather than what we can't do. And I really appreciate everybody that came tonight because a film festival during a planning charrette, you know, those, those don't usually go together. And we had a, a full audience of people willing to participate for a couple hours in this very, you know, unique way of talking about our city. So I appreciate everybody from Oxnard that came here. So... Tonight was one of those great evenings, the room was almost full, and tonight you got to see other communities and how they struggled with coming together and partnering together, and um, you, you saw them, how it's not going to change overnight, but changes do occur, and revitalization does occur, but it takes a whole community, so it was good to see communities do that, and it was so good to see different ideas and, and what our future holds, and so uh, Oxnard's on the move tonight. And um, we'll see that happen, I'm sure, through the rest of the week and in the months to come.